वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल तो आज हम पढ़ेंगे क्लास ट्वेल्व चैप्टर वन और उससे पहले देखेंगे यूनिट सिक्स जो कि रिप्रोडक्शन का ओवरव्यू ठीक है तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं बायोलॉजी इन एसेंस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ लाइफ ऑनर वाइल इंडिविजुअल ऑर्गेजम्स डाई विदाउट फेल स्पेसीज कंटिन्यू टू लिव थ्रो मिलियंस ऑफ ईयर्स अनलेस थ्रेटेंड बाय नेचुरल और एंथ्रोपोजेनिक एक्सटिंगशन Reproduction becomes a vital process without which species cannot survive for long. Each individual lives its progeny by sexual or sexual means. Sexual mode of reproduction enables creation of new variants, so that survival advantage is enhanced. This unit examines the general principles underlying reproductive processes in living organisms and then explains the details of this process in flowering plants. and humans as easy to relate representative examples a related perspective on human reproductive health and how reproduce reproductive ill health can avoided is also presented to complete our understanding of biology of reproduction so now let's start the chapter okay pehle ke liye dekh lete hain sanjanan maheswari ka sanjanan maheswari Born on 1904 and uh, death on 1966. Born in November 1904 in Jaipur, Rajasthan, Panchanan Maheswari rose to become one of the most distinguished botanists not only of India but of the entire world. He moved to Allahabad for higher education where he obtained his DSc degree during his college days. He was inspired by Dr. W. Durgeon, an American missionary teacher, to develop interest in botany and especially morphology. His teacher once expressed that if his student progresses ahead of him, it will give him a great satisfaction. These words encouraged Panchanan to inquire what he could do for his teacher in return. He worked on embryological aspects and popularized the use of embryological characters in taxonomy. He established the Department of Botany University of Delhi as an important center of research in embryology and tissue culture. He also emphasized the need for initiation of work on artificial culture of immature embryos. These days tissue culture has become a landmark in science. His work on test tube fertilization and intra-ovarian pollination won worldwide acclaim. He was honored with fellowship of Royal Society of London FRS Indian National Science Academy and several other institutions of excellence. He increased general education and made a significant contribution to school education by his leadership in bringing out the very first textbooks of biology for higher secondary schools published by NCERT in 1964. So ab hum chalenge chapter ki or रिप्रोडक्शन इन ऑर्गेनिज्म तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं एंड एवरी ऑर्गेनिज्म कैन लीव ओनली फॉर ए सर्टेन पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दिस पीरियड फ्रॉम बर्थ टू द नेचुरल डेथ ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म रिप्रेजेंट्स इट्स लाइफ स्पैन लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ ए फ्यू ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर गिवन इन फिगर वन पॉइंट वन सेवरल अदर ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर ड्रॉन For which you should also find out their life spans and write the species. Right. Several other organisms are drawn for which you should find out their life spans and write in the species provided. Examine the life spans of organisms represented in Figure 1.1. Isn't it both interesting and intriguing to note that it may be as short as a few days or as long as a few thousand years? Between. These two extremes are the life spans of most other living organisms. You may note that life spans of organisms are not necessarily correlated with their size. The size of uh, crows and parrots are not very different, yet their life spans show a wide difference. Similarly, a mango tree has a much shorter life span as compared to a people tree. Whatever be the life span, death of every individual organism is a certainty. that is no individual is immortal except single cell organisms why do we say there is no natural death in single cell organisms given this reality have have you ever wondered how vast number of plant and animal species have existed on earth for several thousands of years there there must be some processes in living organisms that ensure their this continuity yes we are talking about reproduction something that we take for granted 
Reproduction is defined as a biological process in which an organism gives rise to young ones that is offspring similar to itself. The offspring grow, mature, and in turn produce new offspring. Thus, this is, there is a cycle of birth, growth, and death. Reproduction enables the continuity of the species generation after generation. You will study later in Chapter 5, Principle of Inheritance and Variation, how genetic variation is created and inherited during reproduction. There is a large diversity in the biological world and each organism has evolved its own mechanism to multiply and produce offspring. The organism's habitat, its internal physiology and several other factors are collectively responsible for how it reproduces. Based on whether there is a participation of one organism or two in the process of reproduction, it is of two types. When offspring is produced by a single parent with or without the involvement of gamete formation, the reproduction is asexual. When two parents of opposite sex participate in the reproductive process and also involve fusion of male and female gametes, it is called sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction. In this method, a single, single individual or parent is capable of producing offspring. As a result, the offspring that are produced are not only identical to one another but are also exact copies of their parent. Are these offsprings likely to be genetically identical or different? The term clone is used to describe such morphologically and genetically similar individuals. Cell division in unicellular organism, budding in yeast, binary fusion in amoeba. Let's see how widespread asexual reproduction is among different groups of organisms. Asexual reproduction is common among single-celled organisms and in plants and animals with relatively simple organizations. In protists and monarians, in protists and monarians, the organism or the parent cell divides by mitosis into two or to give rise to new individuals. Thus, in these organisms, cell division is itself a mode of reproduction. Sexual reproductive structures, Jew spores of Chlamydomonas, Conidia of Penicillium, Buds in Hydra, Gamnus in Spons. Many single celled organisms reproduce by binary fusion, where a cell divides into two halves and each rapidly grows into an adult. That is, the uh, example uh, Amoeba and Paramecium. In yeast, the division is unequal and small buds are produced that remain at- attached initially to the parent cell which eventually gets separated and mature into new yeast organism cells. Under favorable conditions, the amoeba withdraws its pseudopodia and secretes a three-layered heart covering or cyst around itself. This phenomenon is termed the incestation. When favorable conditions return, the incested amoeba divides by multi- multiple fusion and produces many minute amoeba or pseudopodiospores. pseudopodiospores. The cyst wall burst out and the spores are liberated in the surrounding medium to grow up into many amoebae. This phenomena is called sporulation. Figure 1.4 Vegetative propagules in angiosperms Eyes of potato, rhizome of ginger, bulbul of agave, lip buds of bryophyllum, offset of water hyacinth. Members of the kingdom fungi and simple plants such as algae reproduce through sexual, uh, special asexual reproductive structures. The most common of these structures are zoospores that usually are microscopic motile structures. Other common asexual reproductive structures are conidia that is penicillium, birds that is hydra and gamus that is sponge. You have learnt about vegetative reproduction in pl- plants in class 11, what do you think? Is a vegetative reproduction also a type of asexual reproduction? Why do you say so? Is the term clone applicable to the offspring produced by vegetative reproduction? While in animals and other simple organisms, the term asexual is used unambiguously, in plants, the term vegetative reproduction is frequently used. In plants, the units of vegetative progression such as runner, rhizome, sucker, tuber, offset, bulb are all capable of giving rise to new offspring. So vegetative propagation such as runner, rhizome, sucker, tuber, offset, bulb are all people of giving rise to new offspring. These structures are called vegetative propagules. Obviously, since the formation of these structures does not involve two parents, the process involved is asexual. In some organisms, if the body breaks into distinct pieces, that is fragments, each fragment grows into an adult capable of producing offspring. For example, hydra. This is also a mode of asexual reproduction called fragmentation. You must have heard about the scourge of the water bodies or a 
or about the terror of Bengal. This is nothing but the aquatic plant water hyacinth, which is one of the most invasive weeds found growing wherever there is standing water. It drains oxygen from the water, which leads to the death of fishes. You will learn more about it in chapter 13 and 14. You, you may find it interesting to know that this plant was introduced in India because of its beautiful flowers and shapes of leaves. Since it can propagate vegetatively at a phenomenal rate and spread all over the water body in a very short period of time, it is very difficult to get rid of them. Are you aware how plants like potato, sugarcane, banana, ginger, dahlia are cultivated? Have you seen the small plants emerging from the birds called eyes of the potato tuber from the rhizomes of banana and ginger? When you carefully try to determine the site of origin of the new plantlets in the plants listed above, you will notice that they invariably arise from the nodes present in the modified stems of these plants. When the nodes come in contact with the damp soil or water, they produce roots and new plants. Similarly, adventitious birds arise from the notches present at margins of leaves of biophyllum. This ability is fully exploited by gardeners and farmers for commercial propagation of such plants. It is interesting to note that asexual production is the common method of production in organisms that have a relatively simple organization, like algae and fungi, and that they shift to sexual method of production just before the onset of adverse conditions. Find out how sexual production enables these organisms to survive during unfavorable conditions. Why is sexual production favored under such conditions? Asexual or vegetative as well as sexual modes of reproduction are exhibited by higher plants. On the other hand, only sexual mode of reproduction is present in most of the animals. Sexual reproduction Sexual reproduction involves formation of the male and female gametes, either by the same individual or by different individuals of the opposite sex. These gametes fuse to form the zygote which develops to form the new organism. It is an elaborate complex and slow process as compared to asexual reproduction. Because of the fusion of male and female gametes, sexual reproduction results in offspring that are not identical to the parents or amongst themselves. A study of diverse organisms, plants, animals or fungi show that though they differ so greatly in external morphology, internal structure, internal structure and physiology, when it comes to sexual mode of reproduction, surprisingly they share a similar pattern. Let us first discuss what features are common to these diverse organisms. All organisms have to reach a certain stage of growth and maturity in their life before they can reproduce sexually. That period of growth is called the juvenile phase. It is known as vegetative phase in plants. This phase of, is of variable durations in different organisms. The end of juvenile or vegetative phase which marks the beginning of the reproductive phase can be seen easily in the higher plants when they come to flower. How long does it take for marigold, butyrs, wheat, coconut, mango plants to come to flower? In some plants where flowering occurs more than once, what would you call the interflowering period, juvenile or mature? Observe a few trees in your area. Do you do they flower during the same month, year after year? Why do you think the availability of fruits like uh, uh, mango, apple, jackfruit, etc. is seasonal? Are there some plants that flower throughout the year and some others that so Seasonal flowering plants the annual and biennial types so clear cut vegetative reproductive and senescent phases, but in the perennial species it is very difficult to clearly define these phases. A few plants exhibit unusual flowering phenomena. Some of them, such as bamboo species, flower only once in their lifetime, generally after 50 to 100 years, produce large number of fruits and die. Another plant, Strovalanthus kunthiana, that is Neil Kurenzi flowers once in 12 years. As many of you would know, this plant flowered during September-October 2006. Its mass flowering transformed a large, transformed large tracts of hilly areas in Kerala, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu into blue phase, blue stretches and attracted a large number of tourists. In animals, the juvenile phase is followed by morphological and physiological changes prior to active reproductive behavior. The reproductive phase is also a variable duration in different organisms. Can you list the changes seen in human beings that are inductive, indicative of reproductive maturity? Among animals, for example, birds do they lay eggs all through the year or it, it, is it seasonal phenomena? What about other animals like frogs and lizards? You will notice that birds living in nature lay eggs only seasonally. However, birds in captivity as in poultry forms can be made to lay eggs throughout the year. In this case, laying eggs is not related to reproduction but is a commercial exploitation for human welfare. 
the females of placental mammals exhibit cyclical changes in the activities of ovaries and accessory ducts as well as hormones during the reproductive phase in non primate animal mammals like cows sheep rats deer dogs tiger etc such cyclical changes during reproduction are called oestrus cycle stress cycle whereas in primates monkeys apes and humans it is called menstrual cycle many mammals especially those living in natural wild conditions exhibit such cycles only during favorable seasons in their reproductive phase and are therefore and are therefore called seasonal breeders many other mammals are reproductively active throughout their reproductive phase and hence are called continuous breeders that that we all grow old we all grow old if we live long enough is something that we we recognize but what is meant by growing old the end of reproductive phase can be considered as one of the parameters of senescence or old age there are concomitant changes in the body like uh, slowing of metabolism etc during this last phase of life when old age ultimately leads to death in both plants and animals hormones are responsible for the transitions between the three phases interaction between hormones and certain environmental factors regulate the uh, reproductive processes and the associated behavioral expressions of organisms events in sexual production after attainment of maturity all sexually producing organisms exhibit events and processes that have remarkable fundamental similarity even though the structures associated with the sexual reproduction are indeed very different the events of sexual reproduction though elaborate and complex follow a regular sequence sexual reproduction is characterized by the fusion or fertilization of the male and female gametes the formation of zygote and embryogenesis for convenience these sequential events may be grouped into three distinct stages namely the pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization events pre fertilization events these include all the events of sexual reproduction prior to the fusion of gametes the two main pre fertilization events are gametogenesis and gamete transfer gametogenesis as you are already aware gametogenesis refers to the process of formation of the two types of gametes male and female gametes are haploid cells figure 1.5 type of gametes isogametes of cladophora and alga heterogametes of fucus and alga heterogametes of homo sapiens human beings in some algae the two gametes are so similar in appearance that it is not possible to categorize them into male and female gametes they are hence called homogametes or isogametes however in a majority of sexually producing organisms the gametes produced are of two morphologically distinct types heterogametes in such organism the male gamete is called the anthrozoid or sperm and the female gamete is called egg or ovum sexuality in organism sexual production in organism generally involves the fusion of gametes from two different individuals but this is not always true For, from your recollection of examples studied in class 11 you can you identify cases where self fertilization is observed of, of course citing such examples in plants is easy plants may have both male and female reproductive structures in the same plant that is bisexual or on different plants unisexual in several fungi and plants terms such as homothelic or monoecious are used to denote the bisexual condition and heterothelic and dioecious are the terms used to describe unisexual condition in flowering plants the unisexual male flower is staminate bearing stamens while the female is pistillate or bearing pistils in some flowering plants both male and female flowers may be present on the same individual monoecious or on separate individuals dioecious some examples of monoecious plants are cucurbits and coconuts and of dioecious plants are papaya and date palm name the types of gametes that are formed in staminate and pistillate flowers but what about animals are in, are individuals of all species either male or female unisexual or are there species which possess both the reproductive organs bisexual you probably can make a list of several unisexual animal species earthworms spawns tap worm and leeds a typical example of bisexual animals that possess both male and female reproductive organs are hermaphrodites hermaphrodites cockroach is an example of a unisexual species cell division during a gamete during gamete formation gametes in all heterogametic species are of two types namely male and female gametes are haploid though the parent plant body from which they arise may be either haploid or diploid a haploid plant produces gametes by meiotic division does this mean that meiosis never occurs in organisms that are haploid carefully examine the flow chart of life cycles of algae that you have studied in class 11 chapter 3 to get a suitable answer
Several organisms belonging to Monda fungi, algae, and bryophytes have haploid plant body, but in organisms belonging to pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and geosperms, and most of the animals, including human beings, the parental body is diploid. It is obvious that meiosis, the reduction division, has to occur if, if a diploid body has to produce haploid gametes. Figure 1.6 Diversity of sexuality in organisms. Bisexual animal, earthworm, unisexual animal, cockroach, monoecious plant, cara, dioecious plants, mazensia, bisexual flower, sweet potato. Then moving to the next page. Table 1.1 Chromosome numbers in myocytes, diploid 2n and gametes, haploid n of some organisms, fit in the blank spaces. A human beings chromosome number in myocyte 46, chromosome number in gamete 23. House fly 12, 6. Rat 42, 21. Dog 78. Or this is now 3. 36 39. Cat 38, 19. Fruit fly 8, 16. Ophioglossum 12, 60, 630. Apple 34 17 Rice 24 12 Maize 20 10 Potato 48 24 Butterfly 380 or 190 Onion 16 8 In diploid organisms, specialized cells called myocytes, gamete mother cells, undergo meiosis. At the end of meiosis, only one set of chromosomes gets incorporated into each gamete. Carefully study table 1.1 and fill in the diploid and haploid to form the numbers of organisms. Is there any relationship in the number of chromosomes of myocytes and gametes? Gamete transfer. After their formation, male and female gametes must be physically brought together to filtrate fusion fertilization. Have you ever wondered how the gametes meet? In the majority of organisms, male and ga- male gamete is motile and the female gamete is stationary. Exceptions are a few fungi and algae in which both types of gametes are motile. There is a need for a medium through which the male gametes move. In several simple plants like algae, bryophytes and pteridophytes, water is the medium through which this gamete transfer takes place. A large number of the male gametes, however, fail to reach the female gametes. To compensate this loss of male gametes during transport, the number of male gametes produced is several thousand times the number of female gametes formed or produced. In seed plants, pollen grains are the carriers of male gametes and ovules have the egg. Pollen grains are produced in anthers, therefore have to be transferred to the stigma before it can lead to fertilization. In bisexual self-fertilizing plants, peas the transfer of pollen grains to the stigma is relatively easy as anthers and stigma are clo- located close to each other. Uh, pollen grains soon after they are said come in contact with the stigma. But in cross-pollinating plants, including dioecious plants, a specialized event called pollination facilitates transfer of pollen grains to the stigma. Pollen grains germinate on the stigma and the pollen tubes carrying the male gametes reaches the ovule and discharge male gametes near the egg. In dioecious animals, since male and female gametes are formed in different individuals, the organisms must evolve a special mechanism for gamete transfer. Successful transfer and coming together of gametes is essential for the most critical events in sexual production, the fertilization. Fertilization, the most vital events of sexual production, is perhaps the fusion of gametes. This process called syngamy results in formation of a diploid zygote. The term fertilization is often uh, used for this process. The term syngamy and fertilization are frequently used, though interchangeably. What would happen if syngamy does not occur? However, it has to be mentioned here that in some organisms like rotifers, honeybees, and even lizards and birds, turkey, birds, which is turkey, for example, the female gamete undergoes development to form new organisms without fertilization. This phenomena is called parthenogenesis. Where where does syngamy occur? In most uh, aquatic organisms such as majority of algae and fishes as well as amphibians, syngamy occurs in the external medium that is water outside the body of the organism. This type of gametic fusion is called external fertilization. Organisms exhibiting external fertilization show great synchronicity between the sexes and release their num- large number of gametes into the surrounding medium, that is water, in order to enhance the chances of syngamy. This happens in the bony fishes and frogs where a large number of offspring are produced. A major disadvantage is that the offspring are extremely vulnerable to predators threatening their survival up to up adulthood.
then in many terrestrial organisms belonging to fungi higher animals such as reptiles birds and mammals and in majority of plants biophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms syngamy occurs inside the body of the organism has the process is called internal fertilization in all these organisms eggs is formed inside the female body where they are fuse the male, male gamete in organisms exhibiting internal fertilization the male gamete is motile and has to reach the egg in order to fuse with it in these event though the number of sperms produced is very large there is significant reduction in the number of eggs produced in seed plants however the non motile gametes are carried to female gametes by pollen tubes post fertilization events events in sexual production after the formation of zygote are called post fertilization events the zygote formation of the diploid zygote is universal in all sexually producing organisms in other in organisms with external fertilization zygote is formed in the external medium usually water wherein is those Ex- exhibiting internal fertilization zygote is formed inside the body of the organism further development of the zygote depends on the type of life cycle of the organism has and the environment it has exposed to in organisms belonging to the fungi and algae zygote develops a thick wall that is resistant to dis- desiccation and damage it undergoes a period of rest before germination in organisms with haplontic life cycle as you have read in class 11 Zygote divides by meiosis to form haploid spores that grow into haploid individuals. Consult your class 11 book and find out what kind of development takes place in the zygote in organisms with diploidic and haploidic life cycles. Zygote is the vital link that ensures continuity of species between organisms of one generation and the next. Every sexually reproducing organism including human being begin life as a single cell, the zygote. Embryogenesis. Embryogenesis refers to the process of development of embryo from the zygote. During embryogenesis, zygote undergoes cell division, mitosis, and cell differentiation. While cell division increases the number of cells in the developing embryo, cell differentiation helps a group of cells to undergo certain modifications to form specialized tissues and organs to form an organism. You have studied about the process of cell division and differentiation in the previous class. Animals are categorized into oviparous and viviparous based on whether the development of the zygote takes place outside of the body of the female parent or inside whether they lay fertilized or unfertilized eggs or give birth to young ones in oviparous animals like reptiles and birds the fertilized eggs con- covered by a hard calcareous shell are laid in a safe place in the environment after a period of incubation young ones hatch out on the other hand in viviparous animals majority of mammals including human beings the zygote develops into a young one inside the body of the female organism after attaining a certain stage of growth the young ones are delivered out of the body of the female organism because of proper embryonic care and protection the chances of survival of young ones is greater in viviparous organisms in flowering plants the zygote is formed inside the ovule after fertilization of the sepals petals and stamens of flowers with weather and fall follow Can you make a name of in plant in which the sepal remains attached? The pistil, however, remains attached uh, to the plant. The zygote develops into the embryo, and the ovules develops into the seeds. The ovary develops into the fruit, which develops a thick wall called pericarp that is protective in nature or that is protective in function. After dispersal, seeds germinate under favorable conditions to produce new plants. Figure 1.8: A few kinds of fruit showing seeds as and per protective pericarp then here the chapter is completed now we move to summary summary reproduction enables a species to live generation after generation reproduction in organisms can be broadly classified into asexual and sexual reproduction asexual reproduction does not involve the fusion of gametes it is common in organisms that have a relatively simple organization such as the fungi algae and some invertebrate animals the offspring produced by asexual reproduction are identical and can be referred to as clones Zoospores, conidia, etc., are the most common asexual reproductors found in several algae and fungi. Budding and gamule formation are the most common asexual reproductive methods seen in lower animals. Prokaryotes and unicellular organisms reproduce asexually by cell division or binding fusion of the parent cell in several aquatic and terrestrial species of angiosperm structures such as runners, rhizomes, suckers, and tubers. Objects, etc., are capable of giving rise to new offspring. This method of asexual reproduction is generally referred to as a parasitic propagation. Sexual reproduction involves the formation and fusion of gametes. It is a complex and slow 
process as compared to asexual production. Most of the higher animals will produce almost entirely by sexual method. Events of sexual production may be categorized into pre fertilization, fertilization, post fertilization events. Pre fertilization events include gamete progenesis, gamete transfer, while post fertilization events include the formation of zygote and embryogenesis. Uh, organisms that may be bisexual or unisexual fertility in plants inherit, particularly in angiosperms, due to the production of diverse types of flowers. Plants are defined as monoecious and dioecious. Flowers may be bisexual or unisexual flowers. Gametes are haploid in nature and usually a direct product of meiotic division, except in haploid organisms where gametes are produced by mitosis. Transfer of male gametes is an essential event in sexual production. It is relatively easy in bisexual organisms. In unisexual organisms, it occurs by population or transmission simultaneous release. In angiosperms, a special process called pollination ensures transfer of pollen grains, which carry the pollen grains to the stigma. Syngamy or fertilization occurs between the male and female gametes. Syngamy may occur either externally or outside the body of organisms or internally inside the body. Syngamy leads to formation of a specialized cell called zygote. The process of development of embryo from the zygote is called embryogenesis. In animals, the zygote starts developing soon after its formation. Animals may be either oviparous or viviparous. Embryonal protection and care are better in viviparous organisms. In flowering plants, after fertilization, ovary develops into fruit and ovules mature into seed. Inside the mature seed is the progenitor of the next generation, the embryo. So, here we will see the chapter and in the next video. We will see the next video. We will see the next video. Keep smiling. Bye.